This Rubik's Cube right here is completely CG. But it is made from a real life one that I took pictures of and then using basic modeling made a realistic CG replica. And I'm gonna show you how to do just that. First things first, you're gonna to need to take pictures of your Rubik's Cube. And if you don't have one, I'll have my pictures that I took linked down in the description. But once you get your pictures, you might think that it's time to put them on the object, but there's a step in between that will make this whole process way less painful. Instead of having a new material for each image, we can create a really lazy texture map so that we can have all the images in one. This will save you a lot of time, so you won't have to repeat the same texturing process several times. Now open up a new Blender project and delete everything except for the default cube. Now go into the shading tab and make a new material and then bring in your texture map that you created. And then of course put it in the base color. And it's going to look really weird right now because we haven't unwrapped it the correct way so we have to do that now. All you have to do is select the faces that you want to edit and then move them onto the faces of the Rubik's Cube on the texture map. And you might need to scale them around a little bit so they don't stretch or do any weird things. And you just need to do that for every face on the cube and it might, it won't take too long, just a minute or two. So now in edit mode, we're gonna use the loop cut tool to cut parts where the Rubik's Cube would turn and swivel and everything. Cause we wanna make those little divots in between the blocks. And after that, you wanna put one on either side of each loop cut. As you can see that I'm doing right now, so select all the loop cuts in the middle, in between the ones on the sides. I feel like I'm wording all this really weird, but I hope you understand. And then just scale it down. Not too much, just enough to make it noticeable. And you see, we already have a lot more detail in our Rubik's Cube. Now add a bevel modifier so we can soften out all those hard edges and everything and make it look a lot more realistic. We'll also get that nice shine on the edges that Rubik's Cubes have when lights hit them. They just kind of, I don't know. Now, if you see any weird parts like I have on this green square, you can just go back and select those individual blocks and scale them correctly and move them around to where it actually fits on the picture. Now for some shading to add that extra goodness to our Rubik's Cube. Just plug in the image into the roughness, the specular and the normal and add a bump node in between the image and the normal. And make sure that you put the image in the height of the bump map. Bring the strength on the bump node to somewhere below 0.5. Um, I'll probably mess with that a little bit later. I added in a color ramp in between the image and the roughness, but I didn't really even use it. So you don't really need to, but if you want a little more control over the glossiness of everything, that's a good way to do it. Here you can see that I had the bump node turn way too high and it has a lot of roughness on it and Rubik's Cubes are not that rough. It looks like it was chewed on by a toddler. Turning it down will smooth everything out and make the roughness a lot less prominent. And there you go. You have got yourself a Rubik's Cube that you can um, do whatever with, I guess. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you learned something from this. And thank you so, so much for 10K subscribers. It's insane. Y'all are amazing.